Hi there. My name is Aaron Lanterman. I'm a professor of electrical and computer engineering at Georgia Tech. I previously posted a video about the importance of using local bypass capacitors to clean up the power going into your chips. Some people noticed that I put some ferrite beads in series with the power connectors coming into the board before the big 10 microfarad bypass capacitors and asked questions about whether they would actually do anything useful. To be honest, I started using them because Paul Schreiber of Synthesis Technologies, the creator of the MOTM synthesizer modules, uses them in his designs. Paul doesn't specify a particular part number in his bill of materials, but Dave Brown of Modular Synthesis suggests these mouse are part numbers. Let's take a look at the data sheet for one of these. So ferrite beads are kind of like inductors. They're designed to choke out high frequencies, but they're kind of more complicated than that. Here you see the reactants as a function of frequency, and it's weird. But there's also a resistive component that's a function of frequency. So the behavior is more complicated than you would get from your standard inductor formula. Now you may note here that the effect of the ferrite bead doesn't really kick in until you're up in the megahertz range. So why bother with it? That's the premise of this article, The Truth About Ferrite Beads Will Shock You, on the North Coast Synthesis Limited website. The basic argument is that the kinds of frequencies that the ferrite beads can handle are well above the range of human hearing, so any such interference is stuff that we wouldn't be able to hear anyway. But notice that kind of analysis kind of assumes that your circuit is operating linearly. Even circuits that are supposed to act linearly will exhibit some kind of nonlinear behavior. And if you have nonlinearities, then your system can be subject to intermodulation distortion, where the resulting sum frequencies and difference frequencies basically mean your high frequency interference may not stay high frequency. You can find an extreme version of that sort of thing if your guitar amplifier is picking up radio signals such that you can hear them. So there's something in the amplifier doing some demodulation. And considering how many Eurorack modules nowadays use high-speed microcontrollers, the power bus on a Eurorack modular synth can be a scary place. Instead of a ferrite bead, sometimes people will put something like a 10 ohm resistor in this spot, like in this U-Synth design. You also see people use 22 ohms. There will, of course, be a voltage drop across that resistor that depends on the current draw. So if you're using your voltage rails as references for something, you may need to watch that. With a ferrite bead, you're going to have less resistance at DC and less of a drop. But if you are primarily worried about audio frequency interference coming into your power line, then the resistor will probably do a better job than the ferrite bead. Although that 10 ohm resistor isn't going to do as much as the ferrite bead against high frequency spikes. But I would like to know where you stand on this debate. Are you on the pro ferrite bead Paul Schreiber side? Or are you on the anti-ferret bead North Coast Synthesis side? Leave a comment below.